This week on Maker Update, the social distance bike, a Narnia book nook, DIY UVC sterilization, making circles with Adam Savage, and putting holes in concrete. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, back here with another Maker Update. I hope you're doing as well as you can. I know for me, there's some good days and some not as great days, but uh, I'm glad the internet is here to entertain us, and so I'm doing my part to bring you some of the coolest projects I've found on the internet, starting with my pick for the project of the week. Colin Furs, the maestro of Maker Mayhem, made his own social distance bicycle. He calls it the Hicycle, and aside from the wheels and the steering fork in the front, is mostly a custom welded design. By extending the height of the bicycle upwards the recommended two meters of distance, Colin can now confidently breeze down the street to the delight and safety of his neighbors, though a helmet and a face mask wouldn't be the worst idea. Colin fabricated the frame using stainless steel tubing, which was probably more expensive and more complicated to weld than traditional steel tubing, but it was all he had access to with his local steel supplier shut down. Aside from his welder, the tool that seems to get a lot of use in this video is a hole saw and a jig that he uses to create rounded cuts in the tubing. This way the tubes all create a flush fit. It's a great project and it seemed to be a big hit with Colin's neighbors. More projects. On Tested, Jen Schachter shows off this laser cut book nook project she made that decorates your bookshelf with a miniature diorama. We've covered a few of these on the show recently, but Jen really takes things up a notch. Not only did she make this incredible Lion Witch in the Wardrobe inspired design and shared the plans on her Etsy store, but she also made this basic design template that you can adapt as a platform for your particular creation. By using her design, you immediately solve two problems. First, she's figured out an easy way to add a switch and battery power, along with a terminal block for distributing power out to all the little LEDs that you might work into your design. Second, she's worked out a system of interlocking pieces and registration tabs so that you can crack open your design to work on it, but easily fit it all back together when you're done. If you've been thinking about taking on a book nook project, this looks like the best place to start. You can watch her and Norm build out the project step by step. From her Etsy store, you can get any of the design files and instructions to laser cut your own, or purchase a kit with everything pre-cut and shipped out to you. On Makezine.com, Deep Local, the same design studio that brought you the Spotify soap pump from episode 168, shows off how you can create your own UVC sterilization cabinet for just $50. The project uses a plastic storage bin lined with foil tape, a six watt fluorescent work light is zip tied to the lid and powered by an extension cord that runs through a hole in the top. The bit that makes the whole thing work is a simple modification you make to the lamp that allows you to use a UVC type replacement bulb in the socket. When the cabinet is finished, it should work as an effective way to sterilize an N95 type mask by placing it under exposure for 30 minutes per side. The guide includes sources and references for recommended UVC sterilization times for different materials. It also includes an example of how to build a larger version with two lamps. Of course, you'll need to use this at your own risk and there's no guarantee that your particular build will be 100% effective. Make sure you're getting the correct type of UVC bulb and take steps from exposing yourself to the UV light. Back in episode 161, I showed you the Robot Dreams Great Ball Contraption by JK Brickworks. It's an incredible motorized automata, but the original video had very little detail about how it was constructed. But this past week, designer Jason Aleman spends five minutes going through how he created this design. We get to see how it all works module by module. If you're already blown away by this thing, this new video gives you an even deeper appreciation. Now for some tools and tips. Adam Savage shows off some of his favorite tools for drawing circles. A compass, stencils, even an adjustable circle guide, all pretty predictable tools, but the zinger at the end is a set of nested cookie cutter rings. They're cheap, compact, and strong enough to actually imprint themselves on some material. It's a great tip. On Instructables, Kushagra K7 shows how to hack a laptop touchpad to control the movement of a stepper motor. He's using an Arduino to read the touchpad's movement as digital input and then sending that back out to a stepper motor board to trigger it to drive forward or backwards. I'm not sure what project this is right for, but it's a neat hack that might be useful for you. On the Cool Tools channel, I've got an interview with BattleBots robot builder, Jen Herkenroder, talking about two sets of inexpensive welding tip cleaners. 
They're a great way to extend the life of your welding tip and also it's just a handy poker to have around the shop. Becky Stern has a new video out that takes a closer look at one of her most cherished and reliable tools, the humble $13 Hacko wire strippers. I share Becky's love for these. I have a lot of fancy automatic wire stripper options hanging around, but nine times out of 10 when I'm just goofing around, these are exactly what I reach for when I want to cut or strip wire or even use the little plier grip at the end to twist or pull something. C. Jane Drill has a new video up covering the basics of drilling into concrete what types of drill to use, what kind of bit, how to mark and start your hole, and how to prevent yourself from drilling too far. Having recently added some bolts to my own foundation, I can absolutely confirm the night and day difference between using a typical drill on concrete and using a rotary hammer. A hammer drill will get you a result somewhere in between, but a rotary hammer is pure magic for putting holes in concrete, and I wish someone had let me know. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their latest video on analog to digital converters. The video specifically looks at the 10-bit converter used on the Arduino Uno and outlines its benefits and limitations. It then goes on to explain what to look for in a standalone ADC if your needs go beyond what the Arduino can provide. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. It is always great to hear from you guys. Uh, and hear that this show is something you look forward to every week. Thank you for those comments. You can also get on the Maker Update email list. A huge thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.